Thanks for tuning in to watch The Ordinary Filmmaker. It's Tuesday, October the 12th, 2021, and yes, this is my second video today. In this video, I've got two new stories to cover. The first is a Canon EF 1200mm f5.6 USM lens has just sold at auction, and you're not going to believe the price. It greatly exceeds the previous record of this lens or any lens, I should say, for that matter. Uh, the second news story we're going to talk about is we have an Apple event coming up, and we're going to talk about what's going to be coming out at that event. New hardware, new computers, all that coming up shortly. But first, our first news story. The Canon EF, not RF, 1200mm f5.6 USM lens has sold at auction for, are you ready for this? This is staggering. 500,000 euros. 575,000 US dollars, or about seven to 750,000 Canadian and Australian dollars. That's staggering, isn't it? And you know what gets me the most about this news story? You know that the person buying this is just going to hang it as a trophy on their wall someplace or put it in some sort of glass protected cabinet. They're not going to get out and use it. And that's the shame about this. This is an incredible lens. Now, when Canon was selling it, I think the last retail price at B&H was 108,000 US dollars. And since, it sold at auction up to about $200,000. Never, never before anywhere close to $600,000 that it's just sold for. Now, if you like this focal length, I certainly do. Uh, there are a couple of lenses coming out that you might want to pay attention to. The 1200 millimeter and the 2000 millimeter are F lenses. Now, the 1200 millimeter is rumored to be an, eight, uh, an F8 and the 2000 millimeters rumored to be an F15. Now we don't know too much about these. We don't know what their cost is. The 800 millimeter that I have here, that was around, I think it was $899, but it's an F11. So with the 1200 millimeter F8, it's probably gonna cost, well, quite a bit more than this thing here. And I, 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 do, I do believe that they are STM lenses according to the rumors. So we'll just have to wait and see if it's an STM lens I'm surprised it would be an F8. That's what I'd expect more from an L series. 1200 millimeter, I'd expect it to be more like an F12 or something or F15. So we'll just have to wait and see. Again, rumors aren't always that accurate. But now for our next news story. Do you edit a lot of video? What about 4K video or 8K video? Maybe 6K video? You need a really heavy and beefy machine? Well, you might be interested in Apple's event called Unleashed. It's Monday, October the 18th. That's, yep. This coming Monday, six days away at 10 o'clock Pacific Time or 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time or Eastern Daylight Time. I think we're still on, yeah, we're still on Eastern Daylight Time. What are we supposed to be getting at this event? We're supposed to be getting two computers. We're supposed to be getting the MacBook Pro 14. Yeah, I'm a little bored by that one. Like you, I'm really curious to know what the MacBook Pro 16 is going to be like. And it's really not too hard to tell you because so much about this computer has leaked from various sources, including blueprints. And so here's what I can tell you about that 16 inch MacBook Pro. It is gonna have a 16 inch screen and it's gonna use mini LED technology. Coming back, the MagSafe port. So no longer tripping over power. I'm really glad to see that coming back. I, I have a family and I'm also a bit of a klutz and not, Having to worry about somebody running by and kicking the cord and knocking the laptop to the floor and breaking it is a great relief. Also, back is the SD card slot, and I can guarantee you anything, this is going to be UHS 2. So we got that high speed transfers, and I like that because to me that's one less port that I need, one less USB type C port. To me, it is a USB C type port. But what else is this computer supposed to have? Well, as far as memory, the old M1 Max would top out at 16 gigs. The MacBook Pro is going to be able to top out at 64 gigs. You'll have 16, 32, and 64 gigabytes as options. It's going to have um, an upgraded processor. We don't know if it's going to be the M1 architecture, a new M2 architecture. Uh, the iPhone 13 um, has a new processor, and that architecture could be borrowed. We really don't know, but here's what we do know about the architecture. It is going to have more cores. It's going to have 10 cores. And on the GPU side, it's going to have options for 16 or 32 cores, and that's where we're going to get the extra power. Other options that it's going to have, let me take a look here. Have I missed anything? 10 cores, 16, 32, 64 gigs. Yeah, and some, oh, and the touch bar is gone. I'm, I'm really happy to see that when they introduced the touch bar, you'll remember that they jacked up the price by $300. And as much as I like the touch bar, 
that was too much money. In Australia or Canada, that meant an extra $500 we had to pay for buying the same model as the previous year. And to me, there was no return on investment that justified that extra $500. It wasn't that much better. Um, I use, um, where is it down here? I have this device down here that I hook into my Mac when I want to edit. And this is far more cheaper than having to get one of those touch bar Macs. But the question is, is this worth getting for? Are you on a PC or are you on a Mac? Are you on Linux? Do you use Resolve? Do you use Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere? And all I can do is tell you about my experiences. I'm not, trying to, I'm not going to try to convert you from one system to another. This M1 has 8 gigs of RAM. And I'm going to tell you what the memory activity monitor actually reports when I'm using this thing. So quite often when I'm editing videos, and again this is the low end one, the 7 core GPU, uh, it does have 512 gigs of SSD because, well, I do some video with it. But it was b purchased for home use, not for video use. But it's here, so I have to use it, right? So I'm editing. Uh, all my videos are shot in 4K HQ, including this one here. Some of them are shot in C-Log. And the minimum bit rate that I'm generally dealing with is 470 million bits per second. I often have anywhere from 7 to 10 effects, from color grading to color balancing, to cropping, to transforms, to color and audio effects. Now that I think about it, it's probably more than 10 effects. And I can play this back without skipping any frames in 4K HQ. I can do the same in 8K. This thing is fast. And when I look at the memory in use, and I'm looking at paging as well, with 8 gigs, it never gets to be more than about 6 gigs in use. Sometimes I've seen it push up to almost 7. But usually when I'm getting really crazy with this thing, I'll shut down Safari. I'll only keep the minimum stuff that I need open. I'm just staggered at how efficient this is at using memory and how effective it is at working with video. But still, there are some areas where it isn't so fast. And when I am exporting these videos, well, it can do it in about 60% of the time as the iMac Pro. Remember that great thing? It costs four times the price of this it can do it 60% quicker, but it does run hot. So I'm going to get a machine that's purpose-built for video. It's designed for higher-end stuff, and hopefully it can do 8K video exports a lot quicker. This thing here, for about a two and a half, three-minute video, it takes 90 minutes. For a five-minute video, it's three hours to export. So obviously 8K is not something this is designed for, but I can tell you that these M1 Macs, to be able to get a computer that starts at around $899, and use it for video editing is just utterly remarkable. I'm, I'm just shocked at how good these are. When Luke and others talked about the performance, the Everyday Dad talked about the performance of the M1 Max, part of me just thought, you know, this can't be. And I kept watching more and more people. They said, yep, it's that fast. And I'd watch more videos. And still, it wasn't until I got this for my son for when he was working from home or doing school from home that I started using it, I realized, you know, I'm going to sell my iMac Pro. I'm going to use this until Apple comes out with either a MacBook Pro 16 or a 30-inch iMac. Uh, it, it's just staggering the capabilities of these machines just utterly. Oh, and one other thing, too. Please go ahead and reach over and click like and subscribe. I know you're sitting comfortably and you're having fun. You're just watching videos. And you don't want to have to engage. But please, it really helps this channel grow when YouTube senses your engagement through likes, subscribes, and of course, comments. It lets them know that you're actually watching instead of letting the videos play and you could be off doing something else. And what they do is they then take the video that you're watching and will recommend it to other people. I don't understand how it exactly works, but it does. And since I've started asking you to subscribe, like, and comment, um, my channel's grown quite a bit over the last couple of weeks, an extra 300 subscribers. So please, please, just reach over. Come on, you know it. Thank you. And for those of you that have subscribed, Thank you for tolerating this rant every video. I really do appreciate it very much. And also, thank you for engaging and commenting. But that's really it for now. Unless, of course, some other um, incredible news comes out later today. And if it does, I'll be watching. But for now, I need to get dinner prepared and get that out the door for my son because he's looking at me saying, Daddy, it's time to eat. I should probably get him something to eat. Anyhow, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.